Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar, webinar on insulated roof decks. It's presented by all weather insulated panels. I'm Paul Deffenbaugh, I'm the editorial director at Metal Architecture Magazine. And this webinar is part of our series of webinars, some of which you may have attended in the past this year. Uh, we're glad you joined us for this one, which I, I think is gonna be incredibly informative. Um, in just a little bit, I'll turn things over to our panelists but I wanna go through a couple of notes first. Uh, we're going to make room at the end of each section of the presentation to answer questions, and then also at the end of the webinar. So use the panel on your screen there to write in your questions and submit them. I'm gonna monitor them, and then I'll come on and ask, answer, ask the questions at the right time. Um, and listen up, for those of you who need AIA credits or certificates, they're gonna be handled automatically. Please allow until August 7th, for everything to process. Um, and everybody's gonna receive an email tomorrow with links to more information, ways to ask technical questions and follow up with the presenters and a place to view the webinar again, if you'd like to. But uh, right now, let me turn things over to the panelists. Um, our first speaker is Greg Lusty. Greg is the vice president at AWIP. He has held various leadership roles, including sales, marketing, business development, product management and innovation for industry leading manufacturers of exterior building envelope solutions. In his 22 years in business, uh, Greg's proven a keen ability to adapt to new markets, technologies, processes, and procedures, and is at his best when working on challenging projects and uncharted duties. He is currently an active member of the Metal Construction Association's IMP Alliance, and is working to continue to bring valuable innovation to the construction marketplace. All right, Greg is going to speak first. Our second panelist, and I'll just do the introduction now, is Brian Ng. Brian is the technical director for AWIP. He is currently a member of the Metal Construction Alliance's IMP Alliance, IMP Alliance excuse me, Metal Construction Association's IMP Alliance Technical Committee. And he's also a member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. He earned his bachelor's of science degree in civil engineering from the University of California, Davis. He's a registered professional engineer in the state of California and a lead accredited professional. Greg, I'm gonna turn things over to you. Great, thanks so much, Paul. And uh, thank you to the participants on the call for joining us and for you know, allowing us a, a few minutes of your time to introduce what I believe is really one of the industry's most exciting innovations. Uh, uh, you know, the concept of insulated roof decks and uh, so I'm excited to, to get through this. I will go ahead and get, get right into it. Um, as with any of our AIA registered presentations, we'll just share the, the first couple of uh, slides here to let you know that, that we are a, a, uh, an AIA accredited uh, presenter and uh, you will be able to earn your credits for this presentation. And as Paul said, uh, all of that information will be available to you in a follow-up email regarding how that process is gonna work. So. Uh, appreciate you joining us and, and can definitely expect uh, to have credit for the, the presentation. Um, this is a copyrighted uh, presentation. Um, so with any copyrighted material, obviously um, reproduction and distribution display of this presentation is not permitted without uh, consent from all weather insulated panels. As far as our learning objectives, uh, we've got four. And uh, you know, I believe that we can um, we can get through this presentation, and by the end of it, we 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 can address each one of these four learning objectives. And those are that one: we want to introduce to you the concept of what is an insulated roof deck. Uh, we want to talk about the background of you know why these products have been developed, and and what makes up an insulated roof deck. So we'll get into that. Secondly, we want to articulate the benefits of insulated roof decks uh, when when we compare those to more traditional materials and methods of, of you know, cladding, commercial, low slope roofing. Uh, the third is we wanna get into a little bit of the specifics around how the insulated roof deck uh, performs and, and how we, we uh, had addressed the challenge of diaphragm shear and the fact that we can uh, also offer an insulated roof deck and non-diaphragm uh, applications as well. So we'll get into a little bit of a technical discussion about that and Brian, will uh, definitely help us there on the technical side. And then lastly, we wanna make sure that, that we talk to um, you know, how these roof decks, these insulated roof decks should be utilized and the most applicable applications for them 
uh, and strategies around uh, you know how we utilize these in real life applications. So those are our four goals, and we'll try to stick to that as best as we can. Again, uh, at the end of each one of these objectives, we'll have some time for questions. So if you do have questions, just you know feel free to uh, to ask. So our learning objective number one is let's talk a little bit about the, the concept behind insulated roof decks and, and why these were developed in the first place. I think as with any innovation, you know, we're all typically mindful of addressing challenges in the market, right? And we, we take a look at the vast uh, market size that, that, that low slope roofing provides to us and the vast potential for, for improving upon the, the, the strategies of, of how do we, you know, how do we clad these buildings? Um, and so really for us, it was, you know, when you take a look at the market, it's, it's just vast and it's huge and the, the potential for, for improving, um, you know, the performance of buildings in that marketplace is it kind of smacks you in the face. Uh, we looked at, you know, what are the market needs? And we, and we really realized that, you know, insulated metal panels as a construction material have been really widely accepted over the, the past several decades. Uh, as a as a product that's very usable in, in wall applications and in sloped roofing applications. So for us, you know, our goal was to take what we've learned over the years of of promoting insulated metal panels into the marketplace in those applications, and really the innovation then becoming how do we use that same approach uh, to address the same areas of concern or weakness in roofing that that used to be or in low slope roofing that used to be a, a you know in in the wall and slope roofing applications so so that's what we did we we looked at the market challenges that were that were staring us in the face um and and those include things like you know how can we simplify the project and that that's from the design of the project the development the the installation of the project and then at the end of the day you know how do we service the project appropriately um, and so we'll talk more about that in how insulated roof decks uh, address those challenges. Uh, risk mitigation, you know, at the end of the day, the real value to, to all of us, owners, architects, contractors, uh, and even manufacturers is how, how, do we, how do we design, bid, and build these projects in a way that we're going to reduce the risk of failure, of loss, uh, you know, of, of, of legal uh, there's all these things to consider and i think at the end of the day it's all about simplifying uh the way we we build the buildings and make it more efficient and effective and so we'll, we'll talk more about that as well you know on the labor side of things we 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 know that uh number one uh there's less labor to go around especially in the roofing marketplace than there ever has been and that's been a, a challenge for a number of years uh skilled labor um language barriers all these things that we're facing you know, once you're up on the roof, really at the end of the day, we all can develop the greatest products in the world, but installing them up appropriately is the key, right? And our effort here is to, again, simplify the way that, that the products are installed into the marketplace, provide very, uh, very applicable products. And, and, and we'll talk more and more about that as, as we go through this presentation as well. From a sustainability side, I mean, I think you know, this has been something that's grown over the over the past, you know, 10 or 20 years as well. Uh, sustainability still today is as important as it was when it when we first started talking about it, uh, probably more so now. And this product, this product type really offers a, a phenomenal uh, uh, solution from a sustainable standpoint. And so we feel we've addressed that as well. You know, also value and, and differentiation. And, and I'm not really angling from the manufacturing side here really, but more uh, the, the focus on value and differentiation in, as an owner, you know, at the end of the day, when I build this building, what kind of value am, am I, do I have in this building long-term uh, from a contractor? What, what kind of differentiation am I able to go into the marketplace with, with the products that I represent or that I'm installing? And so these are some of the other challenges we definitely wanted to consider when, when developing this solution. And I think you'll see by the end of the presentation that I think we've addressed that. So, um, and then also, you know, and, and the kind of the easy one or the elephant in the room is, is energy inefficiency and addressing the ever increasing energy code requirements that exist in, in the North American marketplace. Um, but from a, from an overall standpoint, then really we, we tried to take a look at the market. It's, it's significant. We looked at what, 
opportunities do we have to utilize this this idea of an IMP in a low slope roofing application? And what really stuck out to us is that from a membrane standpoint, 65% of, of the membrane share in the North American market were either PVC or TPO, and those numbers are growing year over year. So it, 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 it's, it's easy to see how an insulated metal roof, or it will be easy to see at least by the end of this presentation for you all, to, to see how and why an insulated, root, uh, insulated metal deck uh, offers such a great um, uh, substrate for a membrane uh, to be applied uh, to it. So it really, it really pairs up nicely and makes a really nice, unique, uh, valuable and efficient uh, solution. So just to address, address quickly the, uh, the energy efficiency side of things, you know, when you take a look at, at this slide, and this is I'm sure something that, that we've all seen somewhere along the way, but really the point here is that more, more and more and more often, I guess, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at increase, significant increases in R value requirements or energy efficiency uh, in this country. Um, this slide shows you, you know, from south to north, basically uh, purple being the highest zone and, and red being the lowest zone. But uh, no matter what zone you're in in the country, these, these numbers continue to, to, to grow every time that we, we go through an iteration of IECC or ASHRAE. And um, so, again, an efficient and effective insulator like an insulated metal panel is going to give you all that much more ability to meet these, uh, these, these zones or the, the requirements in these zones moving forward. One other thing I thought I'd share regarding, you know, the, the energy code and the status of the code and, and, and where things are headed is, is just a kind of a real quick look back on since 2010 where we have come from. And, you know, in 2010, we had at that time 13 states with no statewide code, and those are the gray states. You know, I, I'm really more focusing on the commercial conversation here at this point. So to the left of your screen, you'll see the commercial uh, state energy code status. So those gray states were all um, no code, no statewide code. Eight states at that time met the most recent code, which at the time was 2007. If we fast forward, three years, and we look at now we're in January of 2013, you can see that things changed quite a bit at that point. Uh, even though we still had 13 states with no statewide code, we now have 39 states that had adopted the 2007 code or higher. So, you know, really, really, really significant progress in, in that three-year span to get folks kind of more up to speed. And, and that's where we really started to see the acceleration in adoption in this country um, and then if we fast forward another three years, now we're in, into the mid, mid July of 2016, we can see even more adoption. Now we're at only 11 states with no statewide code, uh, but we're at 43 states at 2007 or higher. And, and the really telling number to me at that point is that seven states had already adopted the most recent code. So again, acceleration of adoption uh, is a is a big factor in in you know what we're designing with and and what manufacturers are are, are doing to innovate to keep up with this um, so i guess i'll finish that that thought with just an update as of 2018 now we see that 20 states have adopted the 2013 or 16 code so again just just big numbers accelerated adoption and this is definitely one of the considerating factors for uh, for what we were doing with insulated roof decks and why. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Brian to take on the next section of this of this first topic. Thanks, Greg. Um, so now, you know, now we've discussed the the changes in in the energy code, and uh, how, so how does the insulated roof deck system, you know, compare to conventional built-up deck systems? Um, in, an, in the traditional system, the steel decking would first have to be installed. And then the first layer of rigid board insulation is installed, followed by additional layers required to, to meet the project, you know, R value requirements, um, depending on building use, the, the location. Um, and then finally, the membrane is installed over the top of that, of that insulation. Um, in a insulated roof deck um, system, you know, the steel and the insulation is combined into one step. And the insulated roof decks um, come pre-applied with a with the factory sealant on the on the interior joint of the of the panels, 
Uh, so any additional need for a vapor barrier on the on the interior side, um, you know, isn't going to be required with the insulated roof deck system. Um, so once that once that insulated deck is laid down, you know, the rigidity of the composite panel and the steel facings is going to provide a a stable surface for foot traffic to install the membrane. You know, which which then can be applied either um, fully adhered or mechanically attached. So um, ins insulated roof decks you know, are manufactured on a continuous line as one composite. The foam insulation is injected directly in between the steel facings. The foam expands and rises, and then it's um, cured to the steel surfaces. So what that does is it um, creates a natural chemical bond between the chemicals and the, and the, um, and the steel, which creates one, one composite unit. Um, insulated decks you know, on, a, on a continuous line it's capable of being cut to lengths of um, up to 72 feet, depending on the, on the panel thickness and the, and the project requirements. And the composite structure of the insulator roof decks, um, it allows higher insulation values um, compared to um, traditional um, you know, deck rigid board insulations. Um, and it's offered in standard panel thicknesses ranging from two inches thick to um, eight inches thick and R values up to um, an R60. So you, know, you can see here on the, on the screen, there's two primary uh, profiles that are offered for insulated roof decks. There's a Mesa insulated roof deck and a ribbed insulated roof deck. The Mesa panel has essentially a, a flat pre-painted surface on the interior with, the, with a light Mesa plank. And the ribbed insulated deck you know, provides more of a um, I guess traditional look from the underside of the panels with more defined trapezoidal ribs. In either case, you know, the top, the top um, the top facing is going to be flat to accept the, um, the membrane. So here's, here are some um, photos of the Mesa, Mesa and red insulated decks to show what it looks like from the, from the interior side. Um, standard finish on the interior, it's, um, it's pre-painted white, um, so it's not going to require any additional field painting. Um, custom colors are also available from, from the factory. So I'll go over um, a couple of different um, you know, single ply membrane options you know, that can be used with insulated roof decks and the differences between the two. Um, so TPL and PVC are both excellent choices for, um, for insulated decks. Um, they're both offered in white, which is, um, which is the typical color you know, used to um, promote the re reflectivity of the, of the, of the um, membrane and to reduce the heat loads on the, on the roof. Um, contributes to energy efficient um, systems, which I kind of, Go in line with with a um, with the high R value system as well. Now, PVC has been around the the industry uh, for much longer than TPO. It's more flexible, it's more pliable, and has um, superior chemical, oil, and grease resistance, and it's very resistant to to heat and UV radiation. Uh, TPO newer to the market, um, but it is it's more it's more rigid than PVC but it's also more durable and um, it's more puncture resistance um, and it inhibits some fungal and bacterial growth. So again, both are excellent choices for insulated deck systems and are available in, in various widths. In terms of installation of the membrane over the insulated deck, there's really no, no difference on how this would be installed or welded together at the seams you know, when, when compared to a traditional system. So you know, from from anything above the deck on um, or the installation on, you know, the membrane is going to be installed um, the same way as, as, it, as it is now. So here's, um, here's some information about a, you know, the fully adhered membrane systems. Um, the membranes can be adhered directly to a 22 gauge um, primer surface of the insulated deck. Um, the te testing that, that's been done um, shows that these adhered systems can provide wind uplift load ratings up to um, 165 PSF. Um, the adhesive is applied similarly um, you know, to traditional systems. Um, it's rolled on, uh, one layer is rolled on to the, to the deck, and then one layer is rolled on to the bottom side of the roof membrane. The membranes are then laid in place, and a heavy roller goes runs over the top to distribute the adhesive and ensures proper mating of, of, those, of those surfaces. So depending on what, 
what membrane is used, whether it's TPO or PVC, um, different types of adhesives would be, would be required. In a mechanically attached system, you know, this provides another option for, for attaching the membrane to the steel deck. Um, membrane plates and fasteners um, are installed you know, at the side lines of the membrane like, like, they, like they are now. And uh, the difference is for, for insulated roof decks is that the fasteners only penetrate the top, the top steel facing. So it reduces the number of holes that penetrate through the entire system and the number of fasteners that can be seen from the underside of the system and the, and the interior of the building. So it's also um, important to note that you know, the plates and the fasteners used to attach the membranes to the deck is different than the ones that are used to attach the, um, um, the deck to the steel structure. So the appropriate fasteners and the layout you know, needs to be determined on a project-by-project on a project basis to, the, to withstand those um, wind uplift load requirements. So we'll go over um, the insulated um, deck fastening accessories later on in the, in the presentation. Okay, Paul, do you want to pause yep. for a question? Hey, thanks very much, guys. Uh, I got just a couple of questions here for you. Um, one of the things that keeps coming up uh, or pops its head up in the industry every once in a while is the idea of unvented roofs. Is this assembly, the insulated roof decks, are they suitable for unvented roofs? That's probably directed to Brian. Yeah, I would, yeah they, they, are, they are suitable for, for, uh, for unvented roofs. I mean, and, it, again, it, it depends on it depends on the building use and um, you know where the you know what what the reason for the for the vent is. But you know, that's something that we, that can be looked on looked at on a project by project basis to determine you know whether you know whether that system is going to be suitable for that application and you know, it can definitely be designed around around that. All right, thanks, Ryan. I've got I've got uh, another question for you. Uh, about uh, dissimilar metals, um, if there are any particular detailing issues that you need to work around for uh, corrosion issues caused by dissimilar metals. No, for uh, on the insulated on, on an insulated deck, you know, both both facings are going to be um, um, galvanized, you know, galvanized or or galvanum steel, and it's pre-painted. Um, in terms of dissimilar metals, I don't. Um, you know, it's going to be attached to steel framing and um, the accessories that are used to attach the membrane and, and the deck is going to be um, you know, car carbon steel or, or stainless steel fastener. So um, I, don't, I don't see an issue with, you know, with galvanic action or corrosion there. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, that's, those are the questions we got right now. Thanks. Okay, good. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Brian. So let's move on to objective two. Um, where we're going to take a look at the benefits of insulated roof decks when compared to more traditional materials uh, used in low slope roofing. So share this this same photo that kind of that Brian kind of uh, talked us through in the, in the last section and, and really just kind of drilled down into a couple of these uh, these these bullet points. Um, you know that include, as I had noted earlier, one of the big uh, things that we really focused on when developing this type of a product and, and one of the, the main uh, benefits we see is is the simplification of the process. Uh, we'll talk about the, the various thicknesses, the composite nature of the of the panel system. Uh, Brian touched on that the fact that the, the panels are factory painted. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about penetrations and, and the decking itself and then the warranty. Uh, so I'll touch on each one of these individually. Um, the, the first being, you know, simplification of the roof, basically. Fewer components needed to skin the roof. Uh, we, we really uh, believe that anytime you can reduce materials on the job site, reduce the complexity of the design, uh, you're going to influence the cost of the, of, and, and, the and the really the, the cost of the project at, at the end of the day, and then, you know, increase the performance of, of the building. Uh, so again, that's that's a that's a big feature of this system is just the overall simplification of the design and, and the sourcing of the material and the installation of the material. Um, you know, the fact that this this material is available in different thicknesses really allows you to customize the product that you need for the application that you that you need. Um, so depending upon where you are on that on that climate zone that we showed in the beginning of the presentation, uh, you can pick and choose um, the panel thickness. To achieve the R value that you're after, and 
based on the fact that versus traditional systems, um, board stock insulation that's used in roofing applications, the, the R value per inch is higher uh, for an insulated metal panel of this type or an insulated roof deck of this type uh, than a traditional system. So you're actually going to get a, a more efficient R value per inch at the end of the day. Um, Brian touched on this a little bit, but the, the composite nature of an insulated metal panel provides so many benefits uh, when, when, when you think about you utilizing them in this application. Uh, just first off, the fact that, you know, the obvious use uh, for any material in roofing is, is to stop water, right? And so being that, that steel skins are impermeable to air and water, it makes a real perfect material for, for an application such as a roof like this. Um, other benefits, you know, in, include the, the in, it's not listed on the chart here that you're looking at, but you know the composite nature of this panel obviously is is part of what provides the performance of the system as well, and so that's very unique when you look at products that are typically utilized in roofing applications. Um, most traditionally and uh, most often they were uh, pieces and parts put together to, to create uh, the roofing. In this case, it's a single component that gives you the air water and thermal barrier. Um, the steel skin is not going to absorb, more, absorb moisture as you know a hardboard might. Uh, it is walkable and it provides a really great sur uh, surface as we had, had mentioned earlier for, for applying your, your membrane systems, whether that would be TPO or PVC. Um, another benefit, you know, the fact that these are, these are factory painted, uh, pre-coated pre uh, in coil form and then fabricated to uh, to the composite panel uh, really does eliminate a lot of the risk or, or, or a lot of the need for any field painting, uh, which does provide other benefits for, from a sustainability standpoint, VOCs, reduction, and those types of things. Um, but really, this is one of those things when you're talking to owners and architects that can really help because, you know, you're really providing a clean aesthetic on the on the outside of the building before the, before the, uh, the membrane is put down, but more importantly, uh, you're you're providing a, a really nice looking panel on the interior of the building as well that that can be customized uh, just because you know the 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 product is is standard white on the interior doesn't mean that we couldn't paint it uh, any color that's needed. One of the major to me one of the major benefits of the system is again I, I'm going to keep going back to fewer components uh, fewer fewer uh, fewer parts and pieces. Uh, and and in that is the fewer penetrations. So Brian had touched on the fact that the deck fasteners are going to be installed into the purlins and that the insulation fasteners uh, are eliminated. So when we are when we are attaching the system, we're attaching the deck to the purlin, and then we're attaching the membrane to the deck. We're not through fastening insulation and membrane through the 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 roof anymore. So we're reducing penetrations. That's obviously going to reduce the risk of failure, air, water uh, infiltration. It's going to also simplify the installation process for the contractor that's on the roof, and it's going to enhance uh, the 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 aesthetic on the interior of the building. Uh, I don't know, you know, how many of you look up that often when you're in large facilities that have decking today, but uh, obviously I do now, and uh, when I do, I I do notice that. Um, there are just there are there are holes all through the roof, and so you know I think again this goes back to the value proposition of of the roof and and what you know what kind of building do you have at the end of the construction process? I think with a product like this, you have one that that definitely reduces the risk uh, of failure over time. Um, again, uh, the 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 weather resistance of the insulated metal deck. Um, and when you take, when you consider that, that that you do have metal skins and you have factory applied sealant, uh, anything that we can do in the factory, whether that's uh, you know construction of, of materials prior to, to being staged on site, um, you know I believe reduces the again reduces the risk for air and water infiltration. And I think this is another example of you know the ability to apply factory sealant provides that much more. Uh, consistency in the seal uh, when you're talking about the metal to or the, the panel to panel uh, sealant um, and and that's really what's providing your air and water barrier so uh, that's a really really good uh, 
function and benefit of this system. And, and, and the, other, the other neat part about this deck system is that, you know, when you put the insulated metal deck up on the roof and seal it, um, you can begin staged construction inside the building. Uh, it is it is in essence dry, dried in, um, even though the the membrane system is not had may not not have been applied at that time. Uh, stage construction is an absolute reality with this product, and again, that's just a huge benefit for a contractor and owner to get that building dried in as quickly as they can and as effectively as they can. And uh, so this this can be all discussed in the beginning stages of the product or project, excuse me. Um, as, as it relates to you know this, the overall schedule, and then the last thing that I'll touch on from a benefit standpoint is is the warranty. And you know, 20-year warranties are 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 very um, normal in today's in today's uh, standards. Um, but the difference here being that this 20-year warranty is provided by one single manufacturer, uh, and so. In, in our in our uh, opinion, you know that really does enhance the value to the owner, the architect, uh, the project team. Really, at the end of the day, that you know uh, who to go to for questions on on performance issues or warranty issues if, if they do arise. Um, so that is another really unique uh, benef benefit of of the insulated deck. Thanks, Greg. I, I've got just a. Uh, one more, one question here, and I encourage everybody in the audience to submit their questions so we can get everything you want to do, uh, want to know answered. Um, compared to the traditional uh, roofing system, uh, is there any kind of special detailing that you have to do on penetrations or uh, that sort of thing with this roof system? Is it, or is it just treated the same? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'll, I'll I'll answer, and then if Brian, if you have something you need, you would like to add, go go right ahead. But uh, the short answer is no. Um, you know, again, the, the nice part about this system is that it's been used in roofing applications. This type of a, a, an insulated metal panel has been used in roofing applications for decades. So penetrations occur in slope roofing applications just like they occur on, on low slope roofing applications. So there are standard details available, curbs, skylights, uh, pipe penetrations, etc. Those can all be addressed easily with, with standard uh, details and if a non-standard detail does arise of course you know just contacting the technical team to assist is is the right way to, to approach that um brian did you have anything you needed to add to that no um i i don't, I don't have anything in particular to to add to that um uh, you know greg touch you know touch base on, on those on those main points there but you know like you said a lot of the the details for for the insulated roof decks it uh, it is going to be it's out there um and it is going to be similar to you know to what's um, what's being done now uh, with traditional systems great thank you uh that's what we got uh greg so uh take it away all right i'm gonna i'm gonna turn it over to brian for objective three okay we can go on to the, to the next slide but um objective three you know we're, we're going to outline the um you know the, the diaphragm here um Capabilities of the panels and you know and um, different options for for non diaphragm applications for insulated roof deck. So, Greg mentioned earlier you know that the benefits of insulator panels in walls and slope roofing you know and how we want to apply the same technologies to combat the um, inefficiencies and issues that's facing the construction um, industry today. So, one development that's been made in insulated roof decks is the ability to provide um, diaphragm diaphragm shear. Um, so, you know, one of the main benefits of roof decks is provide the diaphragm resistance in the in the building. Um, the diaphragm shear is a is a structural element um, that you know transmits the loads, you know, primarily wind or earthquake loads, you know, from the walls of a building um, back down to the foundation. So, in that particular load path, um, the the roof structure plays an important role to transfer these loads, and it can be done in the form of um, cross bracing in the in the steel framing, or you know, as mentioned earlier, in in a traditional deck or an insulated roof deck, which then ties all the roof framing members together. So we have a quick um, animation here to kind of show how the loads travel through the building and you know how roof how a roof diaphragm plays a, a role in that in that load path.
you can see that you know that wind hitting the, hitting the wall. Um, it transfers it up to the roof, which then transfers it down to the to the side shear walls, and then it um, transmits those loads back down to the to the foundation of the, of the building. So traditionally, you know, insulated metal panels have been used as a a non-structural component in the building. Um, so either as a it's a wall cladding or, or roof covering, and it acts as the, the weather and air barrier um, and insulation to the, to the building envelope, um, which is then generally supported by, by the building, building framing and roof framing. Um, as an insulated deck, however, you know, the, the panels become a structural component of the building. Um, you know, it helps transfer lateral loads to the foundations, as we discussed in the, in the previous slide, and it's, a, it's an integral piece of um, of the, of the building structure. Um, they're available you know, in, with diaphragm fastening patterns and non-diaphragm fastening patterns. So in the non-diaphragm fastening patterns, um, the diaphragm is already built into the structural framing. Um, you know, the roof decks are then installed as a, a non-structural roof covering, uh, which then requires a lot less, a lot less fasteners, you know, even, even um, less than you know, what you know, what would be required um, in a diaphragm insulated roof deck. So the Mesa panel profile um, can, can be and is available as a diaphragm and a non-diaphragm product, and a rib deck profile is available as a, as a non-diaphragm product only. Again, um, you know, IMPs, insulated metal panels, have acted as non-load bearing walls and roof cladding materials um, to create high performing building envelopes in the past. But you know, the composite nature of the insulated metal panels you know, offers, offers that structural capabilities used in insulated roof decks. It's, you know, it's chemically bonded as one unit. It's not assembled together in post-production um, by gluing steel facings together onto board insulation. So, it's not, we're not combining separate pieces, um, you know, post fabrication, everything is, um, it's manufactured as, as one unit, um, as, as we discussed earlier, the foam rises and it, and it chemically bonds onto the steel facings. Uh, when the panels are laid down onto the roof, you know, they're, they're already rigidized. Um, you, you, do, you put your, put your through fasteners in there, panels are rigidized, um, and to further rigidize it, um, each, each roof component is then fastened to each other and stitched to each other. And we'll go over um, in the next few slides you know, what, what, that, what that looks like and how that um, provides um, the diaphragm shear for the, for the insulated roof decks. So insulated roof decks have um, comparable diaphragm shear load capabilities as conventional 22 gauge B deck systems um, without the need for welding, um, welding the decking into the framing. Um, proper fastening of the panels and spacing of the steel framing is then used to meet the diaphragm design requirements. And you know, each, um, each spacing and each fastening pattern is, you know, is, is to be analyzed on a, on a case by case basis to, you know, to, to ultimately meet the requirements for the building. So it's important to note that you know, while, while the diaphragm resistance um, typically decreases as the joists are spaced farther apart, um, insulated roof decks, because it's a composite, um, it does have a higher performance than traditional decks at larger spans. And the primary reason for this is you know, at the larger spans, um, single skin decks tend to buckle along the side when that, when that um, diaphragm load is applied. So, I mean, you can see, if, you know, with a um, with a two inch or a or an eight inch thick um, composite panel, you know, that's very that's, that's very difficult for that to happen with with that with that type of um, structure. So, in insulated roof decks, you know, the di the diaphragm, the controlling factor um, is is uh, in the strength of the steel facings. Uh, so, when subject to shear loads, the the panels will start to shift apart, and after a certain load, the the holes in the fasteners will become wider and wider. Um, and you know, as the panels you know, start moving apart, they're going to push against the fasteners, the holes get wider. And you know, this, this, um, this phenomenon is, is known as slotting of the fasteners or slotting of the, of the metal. So that's um, one of the main controlling factors for, um, you know, for diaphragm shear in insulated decks.
So we can um, discuss the different fastening patterns associated with insulated decks and how the nomenclature um, is presented. So the image shown here is a typical fastener layout for conventional systems. Um, it's taken from the Steel Deck Institute's diaphragm design manual. So the fastening patterns are specified by the, by the width of the panel as well as the number of fasteners across that width. Now, for example, in a, in a 30, 36 slash seven pattern, the 36 represents the width of, the, of each panel, which is 36 inches, and the seven represents the number of fasteners that are utilized um, across that 36 inch width. Uh, what's not shown here is the, in the nomenclature, is the um, number of side laps that are used to stitch the decks together, but that, that information is typically included in the, um, in the diaphragm load tables. For insulated roof decks, currently two types of diaphragm um, fastening patterns, um, you know, both used in conjunction, conjunction with the Mesa, Mesa insulated deck and two types of non-diaphragm fastening systems. One, one with the insulated deck, um, which is the, the hidden clip fastening, and then one for um, the ribbed insulated deck, which is also, it would, which is a through fastening system as well. So um, Greg can go to the next slide. We'll go, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at those fastening patterns. So the first fastening pattern uh, for the Mesa insulated deck is the 40 slash 5 dash 12. Notice that we have a dash, dash 12 there. Um, that, that dash 12 represents um, stitch fasteners at the panel side laps at, at 12 inches on center. Um, so the fasteners here, it stitches the, the panel's tongue and groove joint together and it holds the panels together. Um, the, 40, the 40 in the um, fastening pattern represents a 40 inch wide panel and the five represents you know, five through fasteners across that 40 inch width and space that eight inches on center. A second diaphragm fastening pattern is the 40 slash seven dash six. It's similar to the, to the previous one. Um, you know, this one has is four, 40 inch wide panels, um, seven fasteners across that 40 inch uh, width. So we still have the five through fasteners spaced at eight inches on center. Um, in addition to that, you know, within the panel side joint, there's a panel clip with two additional fasteners netting the, that total of seven fasteners across that width. Um, the stitch fasteners in this particular pattern is at six inches on center, um, and it's installed at the side lap along the, along the length of the panels. So this fastening pattern with the increased number of fasteners is typically used for, for, higher, um, for projects with higher diaphragm shear requirements, such as um, those projects in, in, in seismic or high earthquake areas. Our fastening pattern shown here is the non-diaphragm fastening pattern for the Mesa deck um, profile. So as we, we discussed earlier, if, if the steel framing has cross bracing that already uh, withstands the, the diaphragm loads on the building, then, then the insulated deck doesn't have to provide that diaphragm resistance. So in, the, in this situation, you know, the, only, the concern that we have is only the wind uplift and you know, keeping, the panels, keeping the panels from essentially uh, flying off the building. Um, the panels here are fastened down with only the clip, the panel clip and the concealed joint. So it's the same panel clip that you see in that in the previous 40 slash seven pattern. Um, these clips are, are capable of accepting either two fasteners per clip or three fasteners per clip. And you know, that's determined based on based on our project wind load requirements. Um, they're installed at each panel joint and at each steel support, whatever that steel support spacing may be. And with the ribbed insulated deck, you know, we have, it's also a non-diaphragm through fasten system. Uh, the fasteners are spaced at 10 inches on center um, and it is fastened through each of those bottom ribs that you, know, that you see here, you know, the, the trapezoidal ribs on the, on the bottom side of the, um, of the rib panel. So, You'll notice here that the fasteners and the plates that are used here, it's, um, it's, the, same, it's the same material that's used for the Mesa panel when it is used as a, as a diaphragm pattern, but you know, it's important to know that this, this pattern, um, this panel and configuration, it doesn't have any diaphragm data, so it is considered a, a non-diaphragm fastening pattern.
Hey, thanks, Brian. I, I do have a, a question, um, and I think I got this right. Um, the panels have a structural integrity to themselves, and they can. Uh, does that mean that you can spread your purlins farther apart because they can carry different loads, or do you just keep your uh, structural purlin frames the same as you would for traditional? Yeah, that's a that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, because you know be, because um, of, a, of its composite nature, and um, you know, the farther the farther apart the joists are spaced, the stronger um, the stronger insulated decks would be compared to um, conventional systems. So um, the spacing and the design would be different. You know, in the when the building is first designed, um, it's important to take the take the um, diaphragm loads for the insulated deck into consideration, so that you know the benefits of Reducing the um, the steel support spacing, or re sorry, reducing the steel supports and increasing the spacing um, is, is utilized. You know, if it's if it's designed for a conventional conventional deck, um, the insulated decks can still be installed onto that same frame, but then um, the benefits aren't um, you know aren't, aren't realized as as much. Thanks, Brian. Um, again, to the audience, please submit your questions and uh, take advantage of having these guys available to answer them. So, uh, Greg, that's what we got. Okay, thanks, Paul. Okay, uh, so home stretch here, learning objective four. Uh, we're just going to talk a bit about the the design and application strategies for, you know, insulated roof decks and and what are the appropriate project considerations, I guess, uh, in that. So, just kick it off. Here with this slide, really just want to kind of outline insulated roof decks as compared to some other traditional roofing materials, including IMP uh, in, in both high rib and standing seam uh, variations, as well as compared to a single skin uh, or more traditional roofing material. Um, and as you can see by the chart, you know, traditionally speaking, with an insulated metal panel, you know, in a high rib uh, product application we we like to see a a standard of a, a one in 12 pitch and uh can really work down to a half and 12 pitch uh, if the if the project is is right um on the high rib single skin again easily can can do a half half and 12 with with a, a single skin material uh standard uh the standing seam roof panel with an imp again we're looking at about a half and 12 and a, a down to a quarter 12 for for particular applications if it, if it makes sense and then the single skin uh, quarter and 12 is achievable as a, as a standard typically with with the roof deck uh we look at uh for for uh, for really both the high rib or, uh, or the the mesa pattern we're looking at a a, a quarter 12 uh, slope um and with the typical single skin application or or, or uh, you know a built-up roof uh we're, we're also looking at a quarter 12 uh, pitch there as well so from a design consideration standpoint, things you should be thinking about, you know, if you're if you're looking at utilizing uh, an insulated roof deck in any application, is that we, yeah, we want to look at projects that would 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 be quarter and twelve or or, or greater. Uh, if we if you do have a requirement that's less than that, uh, you know, absolutely pick up the phone and call your technical service representative uh, and talk through your particular application there. Um, very much applicable on open Perlin or web uh, open web joist systems. Um, you know, metal construction. Um, <clears throat> right now, most applicable for single slope or double slope roofs. Um, you know, this product again, if you if you just keep in mind, it is in in the earlier stage of of uh, you know introduction into the marketplace. So um, keeping it simple, I think, is a good way to to start uh, any any one of the you know utilizing a product like this uh, for applications. Uh, at most applicable most applicable again for use with external gutter systems on single slope or double slope roofs uh, there is a lot of innovation going on behind the scenes with products like this and um, very soon will will be standard details available for internal gutter systems uh, so if you do have an internal gutter system that you're working on again uh, i would recommend a conversation with the technical team on that um, obviously with with this system uh, whether you have diaphragm shear requirements or not is a major consideration when when you think about the 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 profile number one that you're going to use on the project and then also uh, the fastening patterns required you know if it's a non-diaphragm system 
a much uh, more simple fastening pattern could be available to you. And, uh, you know, depending upon the amount of shear required, uh, we would recommend something in, in one of the three patterns that were two patterns that were uh, that were covered earlier in the presentation. Um, I guess to address the earlier question regarding penetration, we, we already did, but yes, penetration details are available uh, and uh, as standard, available as standard, and certainly we can work through any custom details that might be required for, for any particular project. Uh, and yes, insulated roof decks can be used in new or retrofit applications, and we've, you know, we've seen uh, these, this decking system used in both uh, already uh, in, in the marketplace today. I wanted to share with you just a, a couple of minute long uh, illustrative video here of insulated roof decks and how they're applied to buildings. I think this will really give you a good feel for you know the overall uh, benefits to this system and, and really how it works. So I'll, I'll go ahead and run this presentation and ad lib here when applicable. So we, we're looking at a you know a traditional uh, steel frame building. Um, and this condition here is really what, what will end up being an end joint for the panel system. So one panel will end and the other will begin. We're going to put down a cover flashing and some sealant to provide the vapor barrier uh, so that we're not getting any vapor uh, leakage from inside the building to the exterior and, and obviously water from the exterior to the interior as well. Um, similar condition at the end joint or at the end of the, uh, the building there, the edge of the building. And these are the, the fasteners Brian was talking about, the through fasteners that are going to be fastened at every joist. Uh, you can see that's a, a five fastener pattern being uh, being applied there. And so that'll just continue to run down every joist of the building until you get to your next panel. And that panel is applied. I mentioned the factory butyl there. Uh, I'm going to pause this real quick and go back to that because I do want to touch on that real quick. Um, that... Uh, pocket that you see there with the with the sealant that is what i talked about earlier with the factory applied sealant so these panels come onto the site with that sealant already in place and when that is married to the bed seal that is applied prior to the panel going down that is really where you get your um, air and, and vapor barrier from uh, the combination of those sealants and the metal skins themselves so i'll go ahead and run this again And now you're seeing a, a, a closer up angle of the through fasteners. And then this is what we were talking about when we're talking about the stitch fastening that really gives you the ability to, uh, to attain the diaphragm shear requirements for the project. And that's, that's part of the big innovation for using insulated metal panels in, in a decking application, you know, is the fact that we can now achieve diaphragm shear uh, in, in, in a roofing application. So again, uh, really, effective use uh, of building materials to to cover the roof uh, and you can see how quickly um, you know <clears throat> an installer installing crew could pick could pick this up rather than all the parts and pieces that were traditionally utilized in a system like this once the decking is put down the real beauty of this system is it's business as usual after that so an experienced roofing crew once the decking is in place they're not learning anything new the same fasteners are, are used or similar fasteners are used to put down membrane if it's a mechanically attached. And uh, as Brian had noted earlier, uh, welded seams are also um, uh, available. So, and again, the same parts and pieces and uh, equipment is used to put down membrane in these applications. So really, again, the benefit to, to, uh, to, the, to the construction team is that we're, we're hopefully simplifying the, the, the installation, you know, the learning curve there on a system like this, they can get in and out of a roof much faster than they could previously and on to the next job. Okay. Um, just to touch qu quickly on uh, just codes and approvals, some of the, some of the um, maybe the, the technical folks in the audience were wondering, but yes, uh, we do have testing for, um, air, water, thermal, uh, structural, wind uplift, all of those things are covered. Uh, we do have our IATMO report. Um, and as you can see, plenty of, of ASTM and ANSI testing has been completed. Uh, we also do have ISO 9001 on, on these types of products. Um, and FM will be uh, another one we're adding here 
it'll, it would be available in the, in the fourth quarter. Um, one of the other kind of on the benefit side of things that we touched on earlier, and I, I think it's, a, it's important to discuss some of the major benefits just specifically to sustainability. Um, as, as with any you know, steel product or insulated metal panel product, um, recyclability is a major part of it. 30% uh, of, the, of the steel included in these products is recyc recycled content. Um, I had mentioned earlier the, the R value per inch, so we're getting a much higher R value per inch in, in this type of a system than a traditional uh, board stock foam. Uh, again, I'll, I'll go back to simplifying uh, in, in the efficiency that this type of a product brings to a project in reducing materials, reducing waste, reducing what it takes to get the materials to the, to the, to the site just based on the number of trucks it's going to take uh, because it's one component versus many components coming from different uh, factories. Uh, very low to, to minimal maintenance impact on a building uh, with a product like this. Um, I talked about the VOCs earlier in that this is a pre-finished product. So it comes to the site complete. Uh, no painting is, is necessary on site. Uh, so that, that helps the, the VOC com compounds. Um, and then, you know, the efficiency of the product itself and, and cool roof uh, com combines to provide a really good solution in, in the global warming potential uh, side of things. Uh, the product is 100% recyclable or re reusable afterwards. Uh, we, we can recycle steel and reuse the foam. So all of all of these really combine to give you a really nice uh, sustainable uh, product solution for for a roofing application. So uh, you know, with all of that said, I'll I'll just close uh, with with the comment that this course can be evaluated on on AIA on the, on the website. And uh, can't thank you all enough for your time and attention. Uh, really appreciate uh, Paul you having us out and 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 the opportunity to present this really, in my opinion, again, one of the most exciting innovations in our marketplace today. Thank you, Greg. And Brian, thank you very much for a great presentation. If you guys got a moment, I've got a couple of questions uh, to follow up if, if, if we can take them. Absolutely. Um, uh, Brian, you mentioned one of the, 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 these can be used in, of course, new construction and retrofit construction. Um, Sometimes buildings, especially in retrofit environments, uh, they're not exactly square and true. They get out of alignment. Are there any special issues with installing IMP roof deck insulated deck panels on buildings that have shifted? Um, so yeah, it, you know, it, it would depend on a on a project by project basis. But you know, there are there are methods, um, you know, it, during the installation to help combat um, steel framing that's that's out of um, possibly, you know, out of alignment, but um, yeah, depending on on what what that situation is, um, you know, there's there's solutions that can be, you know, that can be um, reviewed to see, you know, what what can be done. Okay, great, thanks. And uh, another quick one, uh, uh, we've all seen uh, people up on decks putting in fasteners, and they're not slow about doing it. They're efficient, and they get a path, they get a rhythm going, they move fast. Are there issues with over torquing or not getting the fasteners in a line? What are the biggest uh, things that uh, people should keep, be aware of that are mistakes that are being made when fastening is done? Yeah, I think in terms of in, in terms of the the fastening, you know, one one thing to consider is you know, there as you know we we mentioned earlier, you know, there's there's different there's different ways a the, the roof the roof panels can be laid out and you know different sequences of, of the fastening. I think um, one of the the key things is to is to ensure that you know certain fasteners aren't aren't missed. Um, you know one of the, the benefits you know for this is you know all the all the through fasteners can be installed installed first um, to kind of close in the um, the building. Um, you know. Greg mentioned phase construction earlier. Um, we close in the building, um, and other trades can start working on the on the uh, um, interior of the building. You know, so that can be done quickly. And then later on, um, fa the stitch fasteners. You know, the installers can go back and then stitch the joints um, afterwards. So it doesn't have to be done all at once. Um, so that's that's the benefit there. But um, you know, something to to take into consideration is just you know we. Uh, we, we don't want any locations to, to miss, you know, to miss any of those, any, any of those fasteners. 
Great. Well, thank you very much. And gentlemen, thank you for a great presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, for our audience, if you want some more information, you can go to www.awipanels.com. Again, you're going to receive an email tomorrow with links to a web page where you can view the webinar again and, down, and download the present. Well, I don't know about presentation, um, but and the reminder that the credits and certificates will be handled automatically. Uh, allow please till August 7th for that to be processed. Thanks for attending. Uh, Greg and Brian, thank you guys very much and uh, look forward to seeing everybody at our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thanks.